My name is Alan Clark, I'm Chief Executive of Scottish Bakers. We organise the World Championship Scotch Pie Competition and this is supported by Bake on Northern in Scotland. Our head judge Robert Ross has been the head judge since the beginning of the competition in the late 1990s. This year he's decided to hand over that mantle to Ian Nelson who will become the new head judge. And this gives us an opportunity to reflect on the successes that we've achieved over the last number of years and also to learn from things that we could do differently. The purpose of the competition is very simple, it's to try and get ordinary customers across Scotland to support butchers and bakers. We believe the best way of doing that is to drive up quality and what we want to see happening is what is entered into the competition is exactly the same quality as what the customers buy over the counters every day. This video gives you the opportunity to get an insight into what the head judges in this competition are looking for. We know that every day is a competition and your customers are the ultimate judges. We hope these videos prove useful and give you a competitive edge when entering the competition in future. Good luck. This traditional sheep Brady, absolutely. You go in, catch that with your eyes. Yes, please, I would like one of those. Ian, it's nice to see you again. And you, Robert. Pleasure as always. What are we looking at today? Well, we're here today, Robert, to assess some Brady's. Good. You know, there's various different parts of the process that we need to look at. First thing is the shape. Traditional Brady shape. Nice straight back, nice round step, front, nice lift. The benefit of that, consistency. Customers buy with their eyes. Absolutely. We've got some examples to look at later, different shapes, but this traditional shape, Brady, absolutely. You go in, catch that with your eyes. Yes, please, I would like one of those. Thank you. Brady's, of course, Ian, can be puff pastry or savoury pie pastry. They can have a minced beef filling or they can have a steak filling. It really depends on where they're being produced. Historically, the Brady famously came from around the Perthshire area and it was the fort for Brady. Um, and in that area, you will tend to see a lot of Brady's made with savoury pastry. Whereas maybe around the central belt here, they're more like puff pastry. Now, can we look at the baked colour? Can we start off having a look? What's your thoughts? I think they're perfectly baked. I might be different I, I when they get inside, but did you? Well, that would be the reason. This one's not so well baked, of course, no. <laughs> I, I would say that they are perfectly baked, and I'm sure there's going to be no major disappointment in the pastry when they get inside. And a nice golden colour. Good colour. Glazed with egg, pinch of salt, glazed just before they were put in the oven. Gives you that nice sheen, that nice finish on it. Yeah, and importantly, the boil out is nil. That means the filling inside is well balanced, and of course there's been no break on the seal with the two layers of pastry. They look yeah. good. Nice seal on that to keep that, like you see, keep that filling in. No burst, the pastry's not wild. You know, it was given the correct amount of half turns because yeah. it was a puff pastry. So, taken down to the, the proper thickness to give us that nice lift without being too wild. But most important, Ian, they've been double glazed and they've been glazed properly. It makes such a difference when you see the luster that's coming through in the top. It's an appetising appearance and it should never be underestimated, the importance of good glazing. Absolutely. This colour, this bake, this size, this shape, these are the sort of things that the judges are going to look at initially anyway. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this bridey. It certainly has a good appearance. Nice lively pastry. Cutting well. Lovely structure on it, look at that, nice lift. Just marginal rawness here, but that could perhaps be the pastry was a fraction too thick or could well just be. a minute or two longer in the bake. There's good lift off that, it could well be. This is, a, this is a problem we often see. Yeah, I knew I shouldn't have let you bake them, Robert. But you said you made them. Yeah, I made them, but I shouldn't have let you bake mm. them. But yes, nice bit of pastry. Let me cut another piece so we can have a look at the, the internal with the filling as well. Cuts really it's, well. It's a good meaty filling. It's a nice it's filling. It's just a pity about this slight uh, raw bone round a bit. Um, That's no bad thing though. When we come to market, we can mark that accordingly. Absolutely. The internal bake, like you say, pastry probably could have been a bit thinner. I would have said pastry thinner, maybe another half turn. It's certainly a nice even pastry. Yeah, but just lift a little, off a it. fraction wild. Yeah. So the bake looks slightly under, and the filling is good. You know, compared to the pastry. Not too much shrinkage. Nope. Nice, firm, 
firm to the touch, not particularly boiling, out. This is always difficult because it's almost the same scenario as a steak pie. The part of the pastry that's in contact with the meat filling the is steams. going to steam. Exactly. Um, and although the, the, there's lid here to release that, you do get a certain amount of steaming. And believe it or not, a certain amount of people actually like it that way. I'm not saying it's correct, yes. but there are people who like it that way. And of course, the pastry is warm, so it's got to be more exacerbated like that as well. Yep. The filling, good filling of meat there. Yep. To ratio to pastry to meat, nice. Mm. Your thoughts on that? I would say that, yes, I agree with that. Um, maybe the filling's a little bit bound, fractionally bound, could done with being a bit slacker, but there's certainly the ratio seems good. Uh, the only disappointment is the slight uh, bone. Yeah, the structure of the pastry is nice though. You know, there's a nice lift, it's opened up, like you say, it's probably just been pinned a bit too thick. Could have been just a tad thinner. That's the bit you did. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd be tend to mark that just below average. I would say I've seen an awful lot worse. Yes. But I've seen an awful lot better. Yes, yes. It's not the greatest bride we've ever seen, certainly not the worst bride we've ever seen. How often is it the case that we have something that looks absolutely fabulous and when we get inside, we see a minor problem, and I'm saying minor problem, it's a problem that can be easily and quickly resolved. But that's why we mark it in all the different criteria, because it's all got to work as a package. It's, it's not just on looks, it's not just on flavour, it's on the whole thing. What would you say, in perhaps a few degrees cooler in the bake? Uh, yes, possibly, and I think just, I, I think really the pastry was just a bit on the thick side. Yes. I think a bit thinner pastry and it would have opened up a bit better and baked off more. You know, it was only an 18 minute bake. I'm amazed at how many excuses you can come up well, with. I can come up with as many as you want. <laughs> So Ian, there are five criteria to look at here mm -hmm. in section two, which is the internal part of it. We've looked at three, we come to number four, which is the internal colour. What do you think? Well, my thoughts would be the meat looks a perfect colour for a bridey. I expect that nice brown, darkish colour for a bridey. I can see the pieces of onion through it, looks good. I like the balance, the internal colour of the, the pastry. I'd expect pastry to look like that. You know, we keep going back to it slightly thick on the base, mm. could have been a bit thinner. But overall, I think the colour, if I was to buy a bridey, that's the colour I would expect a bridey to be inside. Yes, yes I would agree. Um, it looks fine. Just this crack across the middle here showing that the filling was slightly bound. Yes. Yes. And balance of uh, pastry to filling? Well, I think there's a good bit of meat in there and, you know, there's a nice bit of flakiness to the pastry, which personally I like. I like a nice flaky pastry. So I think the balance here is very good. You know, it's almost 50-50 meat to pastry. Yes. You know, I don't think you could ask for more than that. I would agree. It's a good balance and it would eat very well hot. So Ian, some of the common faults that we find when we look at the bridies are probably highlighted here. Would you like to talk through yes, it, please? Of course we would. First one, underbaking. You know, very obvious. Pastry's collapsing, it's very <coughs> pale in the top. It's very flimsy, the structure inside is just, there's no body to it. And it's too pale, way too pale. And you know, we need to dispel this line of thought. This is the way to bake it because it's being rebaked. Yeah, I In agree. fact, that's not the case. No. It is being rebaked, but it must be baked. The pastry never recovers. Yeah. Here's another classic one here. You know, there's no care and attention to the shape of it. We've cut off the end of it. We were going on earlier about the nice shape of a, a bridey. It's very obvious that, you know, there's, it's just no care and attention when they've been but what a pity. pinning that out. Nice pastry, same filling as before, badly handled. Yes. And then the final one, well. Well, Ian, you're going to cut that one or climb it? I think I'm going to cut it, Robert. Very wild. It's not being glazed on the top. There's, there's two faults in this one. It's such a... At least. You know, and these are, this is the main reason why I'm a judge and not an entrant, really. Wow. So this is typical of tail end pastry? Yes. Um, where it hasn't been sealed properly in the making of the pastry, and of course it's all blowing. And then you've got the different, it's overbaked here, it's different well, it baked here, it's overbaked It has to be because it's, it's so thin, isn't here. it? And it's just, and let's see, it's not glazed, that is not appetising at all. You would not, if you went into a shop and seen that, you would not be wanting to buy that. So would it be right to say that probably wouldn't win? I think, I think that's fair to say, Robert. Yes. I don't think that's a gold medal. But it didn't need to be that way. Yeah, but of care and attention, and it wouldn't be like that at all. I agree. Okay, let's have a look at the, the eating properties on the bridey. Let me cut a piece off so that we can start off. We want to see how nice Which is the part you enjoy the best? In the pastry or the filling? or? I think the all round, if you want to try that, Robert, 
I think the all-round eating quality of the whole product is important. The pastry and the filling has to go together. You know, so I don't particularly say I prefer the meat over the pastry or vice versa. I yeah. think the whole thing it needs to work together. It certainly smells good. It certainly smells like a bride. I'm convinced it would eat well. Quite a strong oniony smell coming off there. Yep. It's a bit bound. It's very slightly bound, yes. You just don't want to get to the stage where it's a beef burger or a burger inside a piece of pastry. Yeah. It's not that, but um, I would say just a touch more splash water. Splash more water. Maybe 10% more water. Read have. that off, yeah, then it would give you a more consistent product so that time and again you're getting that the nice eat. Like you say, it's just slightly, slightly bound. Pastry, the bit of cut's actually lovely. You know, it's a nice open bitty puff pastry. That's all got to go together well. Texture, perfect. But most importantly, what Let's does it see taste how it like? tastes. I'll give you the biggest piece, Robert. Thank you, Ian. I'm going to take that. It certainly eats very mm. well. It tastes like a bread, it's just lovely. There's a nice bit of spice coming through, you can taste the onion. Nice pastry, no cling to the pastry. It doesn't eat bound. No. And it's got that, let's like say, there's no palate cling on the pastry, it eats really well. Overall, together it eats very nice. Tempted to have another piece. And amazingly, the, the, the raw pastry around here isn't that noticeable when you're eating it in, in no. total. I think it eats very well. Hmm. I think that what is important, Ian, is for those entering the competition to know that the goods they enter for the competition simply get them through to round two. And in round two, we go to the, their shop, they don't know when we're coming, and we buy the pastries. And those are the ones that determine whether they win or not. Yeah. Hammering home the importance, it's not the pie at the competition, it's the pie that's on sale every single day of the week, or in this case a bride. Yeah, and I think a bit of care and attention to the products you put into the competition, but it shouldn't be a special product, like you say, it should be the standard everyday product that your customers buy day in, day out. Agreed. So it simply highlights, Ian, once again, that every day is a competition. Yes. A competition to get that customer back through the door. And who knows, maybe the next time she comes, she buys two or buys something else. And it increases it's, her sales, yeah. It's all about quality, quality, quality. But even more important than that, the most important thing in the business is the customer. Yes. Without them, no business. Yep. <laughs>